Hey, Battle Buddies and Healthy Heroes. I have today a featured fighter. This is my friend, Kate Davis. Hello. My name is Susie. I am not a medical professional. I'm just an enthusiastic nerd here to talk with Kate about your experience as a LARPer and an athlete. Why don't you give a little introduction of yourself? Tell us about yourself as a LARPer, like when you started, what games you have played, some interesting highlights, any like staff position or characters you want to talk about. <clears throat> um, so my name's Kay Davis. Uh, I have been LARPing. What year is it? 2022. I've been LARPing for uh, 22 years. Um, before that, um, I uh, did really, really minor performances and stuff like that at uh, Renaissance fairs. Um, so I have officially crested the "I've been doing this for more than half my life." Um, <laughs> what a milestone! Because <laughs> I'm I'm 41. Um, uh, I have primarily played Alliance, which was formerly Nero Alliance. Um, I have also played uh, in the SEA, uh, mostly doing creative stuff and archery. Um, um, I've done calligraphy and stuff like that, um, which is a very different aspect of LARP, um, especially historical recreation is kind of neat. Like as a calligrapher, historical recreation as a calligrapher, yeah. sort of like the artistic and creative story side of the yeah. LARP atmosphere. Yeah. That's a neat angle. Yeah, like cool. it's really, really neat. Um, and I certainly tried to bring that into Alliance LARP via props and stuff. Yeah. Um, I've been on staff. Uh, I was on staff at Alliance Caldaria, um, both the first generation staff and third generation staff. Um, I wrote plot. I did props. I did in between game actions and character history specific plot. Um, a lot of writing. <laughs> a lot of writing. World building um, and character interaction. A lot of world building. I think I wrote I did three or four of the race packets for Caldaria. And I was on staff at Alliance Crossroads when they were up in New York um, on plot staff and kitchen staff and medical staff. Wow. What a. What a <laughs> significant contribution <laughs> yeah it was always really funny because i i always kind of became the medic um but uh my uh I, I am a medical professional but i am a medical professional in the veterinary world or at least i was um and so my joke was i can do everything but um uh, fingers and feet because <laughs> they're not paws so <laughs> that's so fun how cool it's very very neat your experience and all yeah. of that so let's focus in more on Boffer combat. So what about the battlefield action or boffer combat appeals to you? Um, so uh, when I was a teenager, I did a lot of martial arts, but that mm. was a lot of hands to hand. And what I liked when uh, I went to Sirendor, <laughs> uh, way back when. Way old New Hampshire, right? Way old New Hampshire was that you were uh, quite intentionally not trying to injure people. So it was like really, really fun and it was intense but without fear of getting genuinely hurt which was really really neat I liked that it was very playful and that um, uh, it was more common back then to have people like genuinely role-playing whether or not their character was injured or um, whether you know they had uh, like a laugh gas mm -hmm. effect and things like that and I really liked that sometimes it got really playful you were fighting goblins and you hit them and it actually went through their armor they were like, <laughs> and like it was like it was getting to play yeah. and getting to be out and about and it was a lot of fun um and no one was for the most part no one was getting hurt wow oh that's great so you have yeah. the you have the martial arts experience that interested you in combat but then taking it to larp sort of made it uh, a more playful and theatrical experience. Yeah. So that's really something you loved about it. Yeah. It, Great. Was, it was very different than getting punched in the face with judges sitting there going, oh, yeah, that's, that's a punch. <laughs> a good punch. A good punch. Let's grade it. Yeah. Like, no, and I just want to like, hit a oh, goblin. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Third question. What is an area of LARP athleticism or combat that you have struggled with historically? Is there like a weakness or something that you've had to work to grow? in your journey as a boffer combatant? Yeah, so um, when when I was younger, my body worked a lot differently than it does now. Um, I have multiple physical disabilities, uh, including um, uh, nerve damage, um, partly from being very active when I was young and felt like I was healthy, um, and doing a lot of damage to my body, but I also have fibromyalgia, and mm. I have autoimmune disorders. So one of the most challenging things was going from 
I started playing this game at 19 years old. I used... Immortal, basically. <laughs> basically immortal. I literally would not sleep the entire weekend. I would just LARP from beginning to end, and we'd sit up having in-game discussions overnight. And, like, I started playing with, a, like, a true PVC longsword that was, like, swinging a log. Um, so I have a lot of physical limits that I have to work within, and the older I get, the more limits I have. Um, so that's been a challenge, but it's also made it so that the things that I can still do, I'm very good at. Mm -hmm. um, it's switching more from, like, heavy combat going towards packet throwing um, is probably what I'm most known for now. I've... If I walk out of NPC camp with a cauliflower packets because I can fit over 30 packets in my hand and just mm -hmm. sit there and have a roleplay conversation. You have characters who are like... Very on edge, like, what, what, <laughs> what's going to hit me? Why, why, why did they send Kate out with 30 packets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. So uh, that segues really well into the next question then. So what are your strengths on a LARP battlefield? Is there a signature style or that has been most useful for you in combat? And you can even speak historically. I think it's really fascinating that you've gone through these transformations. I mean, even me as a mom having kids you are different than you were before yeah. and like even I LARPed a little bit during pregnancy and you obviously have to take very different precautions then so yeah. you, you go through these phases of life and these changes especially like physical changes yeah and it's really interesting to uh, reflect on the differences of those different stages yeah um, I was say when when I first started playing um, I was uh, strictly long sword and it was a really heavy long sword. And then I went to sword and board, and I was playing um, what was called a Templar then, and is now a spell sword. Yes. Um, a celestial spell sword. Ah. Um, <laughs> the very first flame bolt I threw hit the ground, and it was hilarious. <laughs> um, Tragic. I remember, I remember not really understanding how some of the spells work, and there was a goblin who was like, just like annoying level goblin annoying the town to try to wake everybody up and I threw a disarm and I was like I disarm your pants <laughs> because I was like it's I don't know if this will work and I was like does that work please tell me they got it <laughs> the NPC went I got boxers on everyone cool and we were like we're cool and he just like unbuckled his pants and like dropped his pants and then was like shuffling away as a as a goblin going ah like, I don't know if that's the intent of the rule book, but, but the drama of that moment is just, That's the fun you were talking about. That's the playful combat yeah, that you really love. It was really funny because I was just like, I was like, I don't even know if this will work, but that would certainly, you know, if it does, it would mean he can't run away and I'll yeah, just yeah. beat him from behind. But I used to be known for sword and board and throwing the occasional spell. And then um, I moved from that into doing Florentine, which I was actually much, much better at. Original Florentine, right? Because there's some confusion yeah. these days. Florentine, I think, now stands for two <clears throat> weapons of any kind, but original Florentine was yeah. a dagger. Yeah. This was my, my original Florentine dagger. It's designed to be in my left hand and just uh, designed to be up. Because of my martial arts training, if I was doing punch blocking, yeah. this extended my reach and I could block and then just wail on someone on the right side yeah. with, my, with my other sword. And this gave me a fair amount of um, protection on my hand mm -hmm. because because I was punch blocking. That's smart. Because um, hand, hand, hand shots <laughs> are not legal, but hand shots hurt. Yeah. So if you're going to be using that style of defense where it's more arm based than blade based, yeah. uh, you're going to want that sort of protection. That's very smart. Yeah. It's a well-crafted blade. <clears throat> and they eventually that fell out of fashion when the, the charging rules got modified. Because mm -hmm. if you were within arm's reach to touch somebody, you were charging. And that's all that that does. Yeah. Is that opens up a window, and then I'm in, and I'm super close. You are within the be. window you just opened <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. So it was a lot of charging forward. Yeah. And opening a window and wailing on someone while they were like, ah! And backing up. And like... Sounds very <laughs> exciting, but probably a little dangerous. It was very dangerous, and it was perfectly suited for like 19, 20-year-old me, <laughs> because I did the not... The original strength. Care. <laughs> I did not care about charging in someone's faces, um, and typically, back then, it was much, much harder to, especially if I were NPCing, to get PCs to take their hits from me. Mm. Um, back then, women in combat were 
not treated with the same respect that they are today. And I used to, when I was NPCing, have to have my own marshal follow me around to make sure. And if I have opened up a window and I'm wailing on someone and they are backpedaling, going, ah! that marshal can see how many times you're how hitting many them. times they have been hit. Um, and it's been it's been noted before that like women in combat um, can be treated differently. And you know we're we're growing as much as we can as a community away from that sort of bias or yeah. that sort of pride or even like patriarchy. Definitely making strides away from it. Um, but it's not you know it's often been an uphill battle. Yeah, so and I'd I level with you. At about like 2002, maybe 2003, I didn't really see that anymore. Because most, most of the people who were doing that at Alliance quickly found that that kind of thing was not welcome. 2002, 2003 was when that mostly kind of stopped. And then it was just a lot of fun. Good. Um, because, I'm glad like, to hear that. Like, it was really funny, too, because uh, you know I did a lot of really fun stuff when I was in my, my early 20s, especially. Like, one of my characters had um, a shirt that was covered in sequins. And so I'd run into battle with like a cloak on, and I'd like run straight in, and then I'd throw it off, and they'd go disco ball, because all of a sudden <laughs> everyone in the front line was blinded, and it'd be like, and it was, that was my Florentine fighter, and she was a scout, and it was just making it fun. It was really, really, really fun. Um, and then uh, uh, now I'm much more well known for packets um, and being a backpack mm. and being combat front line like I am like hand on back for my fighter at all times and as soon as he and he would like make space he would move forward and along the front line I would then throw packets sideways into yeah. NPCs and like I think that's probably what I'm most known for now is clearing distance as a backpack like is, is perimeter control while you're a caster yeah and an earth caster even because we don't have much aggression as a as a backpack you're a healer yeah. so you don't have those damage spells that celestial casters have so you would deal with npcs with binding or repels yeah usually like um like pins or webs anything to get yeah. them stationary so that our rogues could circle because wow. typically they were already circling, yeah. And the the person who I was backpacking, he would move forward, and I would get close, and we would be able to assess what was happening with big bads or what was going on, and then we would determine who the scouts and the rogues needed to get from mm. behind. And so you're like, as the backpack, you're like putting the targets on them. You're yeah. like, if I pinned that one, that one's the problem that the rogues need to target. Yeah. Oh, what cool synergy <laughs> strategy! Yeah. So. And, and and when I would throw, typically the beginning of my incan is very quiet and whatever the key word is was very loud yeah. of uh, you know, we're mystic force. I web you! <laughs> right? so all of a and, sudden. And the, the rogues would hear web! And then they would watch for an NPC to go, ugh, ugh. And, and even if it's a rip out on three count in Monster Strength, even if they have that three count, you've still planted that target. Yeah. Like you're still succeeding in your strategy of like, that's the one who's a problem. That's the one we're getting now. Yeah. yeah. So cool. And it, it was usually, if there was a big bad guy, I was usually mouthing off from behind my fighter because um, I have a talent for making people very angry. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to know the fastest way to get a big bad guy killed is to mouth off, to have him go, are you seriously hiding behind a fighter while you mouth off? Come fight me! <laughs> and then having, you know, Will as Jeebus or Tab as, as, um, as Whip roll up from behind him swinging 30s or 40s and just be like, and be like ha! So, so that sort of, you think, covers like what you have grown through and then what your strengths and signature styles are? Or yeah, are I anymore? think so. Like, uh, I was always, like, I'm not a super great battle strategist. Um, I have a really hard time staying grounded in the middle of the chaos of battle. So, um, typically, like, what I do best as is give me a roll. Give me the, the draw aggro verbally. Yeah. Paint the target. <laughs> yeah, like, let me know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and... I can strategize a retreat very well. Mm. Like I know when we were talking inside, we were talking about uh, Eroxa or Santet, mm -hmm. who had a lot of body and was a very strong, very big fighter, could do lots of damage. 
and I was quite infamous for multiple times retreating off of a battlefield, running past, doing cure mort, cure mort, cure mort, which will bring him all the way up to full or almost. Um, like 90 and, points of healing right there. Yeah, like 90 points of healing, and he would stand up, and he'd be like, oh, she saved me! And then he'd see that, like, the big bad was chasing me, he'd be like, oh, no, I was a speed bump. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, like like the reason you picked him up was so he could slow down the bad guy for a second you're like i didn't need to save you i needed to escape yeah. speed bump strategy because because he would stand up and he would start fighting to the best of his ability and that would give me time to assess who's down who needs to be taken off the field entirely because they have a status effect that's just going to last and you know like are you Assess worth the purify? Yeah. That, Are you worth yeah. the purify? No. Okay. You're gonna go sit over here and be protected by these people and these four people. If we get them up, we can take this guy. And typically, by the time we get them up, Air Rocks is now down again. But that was an effective <laughs> speed bump. Yeah. But it was always it was always really funny. I was good at strategizing retreats, um, but not <laughs> anything else. Huh. But that was usually um, just working within like team dynamics and yeah. understanding what people needed in order to be a get around from behind because like the rogues and the scouts were always the ones that were doing like the most damage consistently on a big battle because yeah. as soon as they could get behind someone that's just positioning yeah that's my favorite thing to do i love being and a scout it was always really really funny when um people would meet me later afterwards and they'd be like man you were like right up in the front lines like how much damage do you do i'm like i do threes i'm a scholar with a bow i do threes I would love to ask a couple questions mm -hmm. about your uh, fitness and athletic life, like outside of LARP. Are there any activities that contribute to your LARP fitness or um, any exercise you do throughout the week that might be tailored towards LARP goals? Uh, definitely. So, um, uh, so I'm still fairly active, though I have to be active in a very different way. I'm not allowed to run and I'm not allowed to jump because my knees are destroyed. Wow. <laughs> um, so I do a lot of walking. I do a lot of hiking. I do mm -hmm. a lot of hiking with my dog, mm -hmm. um, which is always really fun. Um, I do a lot of weightlifting, um, usually with kettlebells, and I do a lot of kettlebell swinging and movement so that it's functional strength. Sure, um, like whole body. So a piggyback question on that. Yep. Um, if your knees are a problem for you, um, I'm hearing, is it mostly... Uh, impact significant rather yeah. than range of motion so can you still do the squats and the swings yep. with the range of motion in your knees yeah and I'm supposed to continue doing things with my full range of motion for Great. as long as possible um, but impact um, my knees have basically flattened out from mm. so much impact mm. um, which can be uncomfortable but the more movement that you have the more you move around the lubricant that's in your joint and so you reduce your overall pain levels with arthritic changes um, as long as you continue moving it, but without the impact. Wow, so, that's, that's a great nuance. Yeah. That's something that I'm learning. Like I recently just had an overuse injury in my left knee and me understanding what it feels like to know when impact is a problem versus when range of motion is a problem. Those yeah. two different considerations for joints are oh, yeah. really important to, to know which one is your problem. Yeah, and it's really, it's really funny too because I, you know, in my late 30s to early 40s became such a gym rat that I actually tore my hamstring doing kettlebell swings. Oh no! <laughs> I tore my quad once and it was the worst! It was like... Big leg muscles! You're like, I need those! Well, it was just always really... It was really funny interacting with the doctors because they were like, how did you do this? And I'm like, I might be fat, but I do a lot. <laughs> you don't understand how strong I am I just by looking at me. I did 50 pound kettlebells, thank you very much. Yeah. And they would be like, oh! Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, I'm really happy to make that point and emphasize it. You have no idea how strong someone is yeah. just by looking at yeah. them. Well, I joke around. I was like, if somebody sees me pick up a 50-pound bag of dog food and sling it over my shoulder, people get weird and uncomfortable, and can I help you with that? If people see me pick my 50-pound six-year-old up, nobody bats an eye. Nobody thinks twice about it. And he's more wiggly than the dog food is. <laughs> so it's like, it's so... He's a lot harder. Well, yeah, and it's like, it's so it's so funny because... There's subconscious, like, biases. Yeah, yeah it's... It, and I think it's... A, a lot of people just aren't used to seeing women and femme-presenting people or femme-seeming people who have very dense muscle mass. Mm. And, like, um, yeah, I know you're going to interview Jeremy later, but Jeremy is, like, the elf. 
He is long and he's lean and he's very strong. He's very fast. And he has a lot of endurance. And I've always been like the the dwarf. Yeah. I pick stuff up, I put it down, I do heavy yard work. I do very difficult things. Uh, when I did run, I would run and I would enjoy it, but I would be like grumbling the entire time. Like, why do I need to run? I can just punch stuff. <laughs> Cardio's not your friend so much. Cardio's not my friend unless it's an elliptical. Um, but uh, yeah, different people suited for different things. Yeah, so I, I do I do a lot of weight training. Um, I used to do a lot, a lot of around the house. Um, packet throwing practice Ooh. because that's a really good way of practicing throwing things around obstacles um, like hallways kitchen yeah anywhere in there yeah like a anywhere like I don't do it so much here but especially when I was younger and I was living with a fellow uh, LARPer my, my boyfriend at the time and it was always free game for packets so you would just randomly hear an incant and then a packet would come from somewhere <laughs> You're like on the couch. <laughs> it was like relaxing. a free game. But we figured out, you know, like how to try to, you can technically bend the arc of a packet based on the position of the tail. And so we used to like mess with our guests and like throw things around the corner. It's so much fun, but like it's really, it's really neat because in combat you need to be able to get around your friends towards as a the enemy. And especially as a backpack and being able to throw things like around you know, like, um, columns, like, in, in a house, or, like, through a doorway, and things like that, being able to get things through obstacles yeah. when it's not your friends helps a lot when it is your friends. So, back on, yep. um, my last question before rapid fire yep. is, what fitness or athletic skills do you think are most valuable in preparing for LARP? Um, in addition to your house target practice. Yeah, I was going to say, house target practice is really good. Um, practicing in cans if you're going to be a spellcaster. Mm -hmm. um, and practicing the rhythm of it. And practicing it so that you're not throwing the, the packet before you finish with your in can. Yeah, I do. With binding force, I web you. Ha! Huh! Yeah. <laughs> and it, 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 beat! Yeah, and like it makes it a lot easier. It also helps you to not get quite so tongue-tied. I tend to get very tongue-tied. I have Tourette's, so, but like, um, doing that, and honestly, like, I think the most underrated fitness activity that's, that is applicable at LARP is being able to ground yourself, especially in combat, of being able to go, I'm safe, what do I need to do? Okay, now I'm going to do this, and this is my job in this battle, is to paint the bad guy, mm -hmm. and to mouth off to the bad guy, mm -hmm. so I need to figure out who it is, okay, it's that person, okay, you know, talk to the person that I'm backpacking, okay, we need to position so that I can get up close enough to hit him with a packet, to get his attention, and then what do we know about this particular NPC, is this like a random big bug, is this a shadow lord is this a vampire is this some elemental thing because your strategies something... are going to depend on what the monster is you're going to have different spells or different you know their immunities and things like that yeah like completely different um strategies as far as what i'm going to throw and completely different strategies as far as draw drawing aggro verbally what do we know about this character who do they hate who do they like what's his biggest insecurity <laughs> <laughs> are you ready for rapid fire yes here we go Number one, what's the most important skill for combat success? Um, it's uh, being able to stay grounded, which, um, uh, because combat can be super duper overwhelming, even if you've, you know, been LARPing forever, being able to stay grounded and to focus on what it is that you need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, a lot of LARP fitness is definitely, like, how to move your body and knowing how to do all of that but also things like meditating and yoga and being able to find your center in the middle of complete chaos so you can do your one thing, whatever it is, um, is really, really super important. Rapid fire number two. What's the most important tip for newbies? Um, being able to accept your role, whatever it is. And that's not like a know your place kind of like, you know, crappy hierarchy thing, but um, whatever it is that you, um, whatever it is that you can do, do it well. Whether it's your personal out of game limits or whether it's your in game limits as far as your stat card, um, <clears throat> know what it is that you do well and then do the crap out of it. 
<laughs> rapid fire number three. What's the most important secret for sustained enjoyment? Um, honestly, just finding whatever you can do, and it's kind of a repeat of the last one, but like finding what it is that you can do right now and doing it really well. Mm -hmm. And like, even if... I mean, I mean, because we go through these different stages and these different phases, like, yeah. it makes sense that the advice for the new player is very similar to your advice for the veteran player, because like when you're in the new stage versus when you're in the veteran stage, if you go through a motherhood stage and your body changes, like you're gonna play the game differently and to be adaptable and know what you can do. Yeah, that is the same advice. Yeah, like every everything changes and there's always new limits. Mm -hmm. I mean, LARPing for me now can be physically very painful and I'm very limited in what I can do sometimes. And there's always ways to make these fun little moments and fun stories, especially in combat. Like role play, you can make fun, awesome stories by just having really good interactions. But there's a lot of that in combat of, you know, like catching people completely by surprise with a packet. <laughs> <laughs> of, you know, like, especially like side thrown packets. Oh, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> Of you know there was this there was this really great fight and it was up in New Hampshire and I'm, you know like trudging forward and I see that you hey, that's are, where I play <laughs> huh. we're that's Nukujo we're you know like making your way up and I continue to look forward and I'm, I've got my pack I'm, I'm doing my scout thing I think yeah. I've got my position oh doom Chuck bam what. You were so far away from me. You were so far away and you did not even look at me. <laughs> and like, there are so many moments where you can give people those little surprises. No <laughs> telegraphing that your peripheral was locked in. Like yeah. you didn't even glance. <laughs> like I did not think that you yeah. had any peripheral on me. Yeah. That was incredible. And like just being able to have those little moments and the kind of self throttling that happens in those things. Yeah. Of, if I go out and I have a character that has, you know, an instant you know, like some sort of an instant death effect or an instant like the doom howls, effect, like, like throwing dooms <laughs> with only a howl as a warning. I, I got you though. Like I also gave you a moment later on when we were much closer and we were already face to face and you like three times in a row howled at me and like I physically like hit the deck, like completely ducked my whole body out of the way. And it was like, whiff, nice, whiff, nice, whiff, nice. Like, in a row yeah, yeah like, um, because like you have to you have to know that like the the kind of it's almost metagaming of if i'm trying to give you a fun fight yeah i'm gonna catch you off guard once i'm gonna nail you with it and have you go dodge yeah yeah because you, your fun moments you deserve fun too as an npc yeah but then after that i know that people like you and will and a lot of the fast dodgy people if i throw center mass i can throw center mass at almost my top speed and you all can get out of the way under it <laughs> I, i'm always going under it <laughs> you know so like most people go under gary will do this like side turn like yeah his upper moves. body thing yeah like he moves that so fast and like Especially if you aim like right for Gary's sternum. Yeah. That's like his I get to be the matrix move thing. Yeah. And like when you know people well enough and you want to give them a good fight, you give them those moments where you're pretty positive that they can dodge. And <laughs> <laughs> like that's part of the fun and like going up to a newbie and like throwing at their shins. Like where they're like, Oh, I can move this and then as they get faster you move further and further up to give them a bigger challenge, but like giving them those moments, like unless my my character as a PC or an NPC is going in with the intent to kill uh, somebody. Yeah, you know, unless like you've I, got like that story that's, yeah. you know, pr prevailing over any Lord of, any sort of like mechanical metagaming, like if you've got the story motive, then yeah. you're gonna full throttle it. Yeah, you know, like, Those moments are appropriate too. You have yeah. to find those little moments to have fun and to be able to give your friends fun because yeah. like, that is so much fun. Yeah. be able to go up and go out and to fight and you know to be to the tell these stories with each other of yeah. these moments that you've given each other yeah. honestly like 
Uh, what I'm hearing you say is that your secret to sustained enjoyment is like community and empathy yeah. and like camaraderie and, and compassion towards each other. Like LARP is such a beautiful thing because you meet these people, you make these relationships and then you play with each other. Yeah. And so. like, you know, I always kind of go back in my head to the concept of um, in the animal world, lions play fight with their cubs in order to teach them how to hunt. And there's this like really famous photo of this like little tiny lion cub biting his dad on the butt. And the dad's like, ah, I'm slain. <laughs> I am slain. You got me. And like sometimes you you just have to be that lion of like, I can absolutely kill you and ah, you, got you got me. I'm a six hit point goblin. You got me. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. And, you know, like just uh, understand that like we're all there for fun and we're all there to move and use our brains mm -hmm. and um, just have fun however you can have it. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I think my very last rapid fire is uh, parting wisdom. Any last words of advice that you think our battle buddies and healthy heroes should know? Um, just uh, limits are okay and normal and they will happen, um, especially um, you know, as your body grows and changes when you get older, like uh, my, <laughs> my, my knees like literally can't take impact anymore. Um, and that's, that's okay. It's okay yeah. for me to be the juggernaut with a bunch of packets. Doesn't make you a bad LARPer. Doesn't make you a bad yeah. athlete. You've got a different body setup now than you used to. Yeah. And like, you know, especially, uh, after having two full term pregnancies, my hips are notably wider. I had to relearn how to fight. Um, because my stance was completely different. Yeah. I literally still have diastasis recti. Like yeah. it just changes your abs yeah, and your core. And it's like different it's being, you know, 19 with a body that worked to being 41 with, you know, I can't engage my core very well anymore. I can't do impact on my knees, but like I can absolutely make sure that someone is paying attention to their peripherals because I always am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I learned, learned, always. lesson learned, lesson learned. <laughs> and, and, okay, I have an official important question for you. Okay. Would you like to fight me? Of course. Yes! Always. I will see you on the battlefield. Awesome.